But again, welcome. Our agenda today is going to be talking a little bit about focus, talking some about the Emerging Leaders Program. We have an illustrious group of alums who are going to be joining us today. And then we'll open it up for all things Q&A. And even though these are going to be questions that you're going to be asking of our panelists, I like to mix it up a bit. So I'll probably be asking you questions uh, as well, just in terms of your own leadership, what you're looking to gain in the program. And also for our alums, what they're doing post-programming and what they've been inspired to lead or perhaps dip their toes in. So next slide, uh, please, uh, Becky. So for those of you who don't know about Focus St. Louis, we have a collective history of 50 plus years. At one point, we were Confluence uh, St. Louis, which did a lot of policy forums. And then we were Leadership St. Louis, which is our program for senior level executives. And close to about three uh, decades ago, someone had the bright idea that the two organizations should come together. And they couldn't have made a, a better suggestion and decision related to that. But since then, we have added additional programs, one of which is our Emerging Leaders Program that we're here today talking about. Another is our um, Women in Leadership Program, which again is a program that we have for women professionals along the continuum of program. We've also added a youth leadership program, which is for juniors in high school. We have an experience St. Louis program for new executives, their partners and their spouses who wanna learn about St. Louis. And uh, those are just some of the programs that we offer at Focus. We say we meet people where they are on their continuum of leadership. Um, and it's, you know, I've, I've had the fortune of working for this organization um, a little bit over 10 years now. And every year, I continue to be in that space of learning something new, something exciting, and also something that our community is challenged um, with. And the cool thing about this program is our participants get an opportunity to work on things that they are challenged with. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on in terms of the civic action projects. And um, our alums, I'm sure they will be sharing what some of the lessons they have learned uh, as a result of doing that. So if you're curious as to who are the participants in this program, these are individuals that are early in their career or mid-career professionals. We've had a number of entrepreneurs We've had for-profit individuals as well as nonprofit directors or middle um, nonprofit directors that have gone through this program. And we've also had government employees. We get the continuum of individuals in different <coughs> organizations and different sectors that go through this program. Unlike some of our other programs, this is a three month program. Uh, there's a one day opening retreat uh, that we use to kick off the program. We've made some adjustments to the program based on feedback that we've received from our alums. We're always making adjustments because we like to meet people where they are. But there are some key things that remain part of the program. And that is uh, our seminar days where we focus on leadership toolkit essentials that you'll need to be able to do your work um, better in um, the space that you're in, but also in your community action projects or ways in which you feel like you need to be engaged in the community. And I have to say that our Emerging Leaders uh, Program participants, when I see, hear, read, engage with them in community, I am always impressed and inspired by the work that they come to come to do. And they are part of the leadership really that is moving our region forward in so many ways. And you'll hear from many of them um, later on, three of them in particular later on today. The civic action projects that I mentioned, these are projects that have been submitted by our different nonprofit partners or alums who have a particular project that they feel that this class 
has insights about based on your experience. And in so doing, our program participants have an opportunity to learn about how they show up as leaders. You get real-time feedback in a manner that I feel that you are much more open to than stay at work. So I'm just curious, uh, John, since you're here, Paula, since you're here, have you ever participated in 360 feedback at work where your peers give you feedback? How was that experience for you? And John, I see you're unmuted, so you can go ahead and, and type in. Yeah, so I, I've received it, um, I guess, in, in different circumstances. Um, I guess it just depends who you're receiving feedback from. So from peers, I've received feedback from my, my supervisors, and I've also received um, feedback from people that also report to me. So, um, I think it's just a good opportunity to to kind of take a full look at yourself and your role as, as a leader and kind of figure out things that you could do better, um, things that you do well, and kind of improve on those things as well. So that was a good uh, part of the of the program, as, as you were mentioning. Okay, you've heard it from John, uh, no doubt. Paula, did you want to jump in as well? Hey, everyone. Yeah, I've uh, participated in 360 feedback as well in a couple of different settings. Um, I think one of the things that I always take away in the spaces that I've done it in, especially like work or other places, um, you do an assessment of yourself as well. And then like other folks do it. Um, and one of the things that I've noticed more and more is how you might see yourself and how you see your, how others see you. Um, typically we tend to be very hard on ourselves. Um, so I think that's one of the biggest takeaways that I do or I get when I uh, do 360s is that um, maybe just be a little bit more gentle uh, on myself, but also recognizing like um, different people see different things in you and that that's important and special. Absolutely, thank you for that. You'll get that in a I would say not so much a structured way within the context of our civic action project, but just in how you interact with the folks that you are in a group with. And it gives you different insights. Uh, some you would learn as Paula mentioned that, you know what, I've been a little bit too hard on myself and maybe this is a skill that I have that I'm really, really good at. And I need to find ways to amplify that at work or in other, civic uh, community engagements that you show up on. And on the other side is you may learn something that you really didn't want to know uh, about yourself. You're like, oh, that's how I come across. Maybe there are ways in which I need to uh, fine tune my leadership skills um, um, just to make me or help me lead better. And time commitment, it's roughly about three months, but it goes beyond that. I find that our Emerging Leaders program participants also socialize um, together after the program day, after work on days that we don't even have programs. And over the years, I've noticed that there's been a, a cross-pollination recruitment that happens in terms of bringing people onto different boards or different nonprofit boards that many of our leaders are affiliated with. If we look at the program outcomes, because of the projects, that they work on, there's an increased sense of engagement in the region. Our emerging leaders um, often serve as ambassadors at one of our signature events, uh, What's Right with the Region, which is coming up May 11th. And it's an opportunity for you to have, I would say at least, uh, depending on how quickly you can socialize and get around the room, at least 403 new people that you haven't met. Um, but that's what our program does. It uh, gives you civic awareness on the issues, challenging as they may be, but opportunities that you can plug in and bring others along. It also helps you have a strong understanding of what your core values are, what is important to you, and how can you find ways to meet people in the middle that you may not have shared values um, on, but you res are respectful um, to the point of where you can at least hear what they're saying. And at the end of the program, 
what we look to do is to provide you with a toolbox that allows you to take active roles in really being the next generation of leadership professionals that are moving our region forward. And I always tell people that there isn't a place and space that I won't go to, that I will not meet a focus alums. In our history, we have over 10,000 plus alums. We know about 75% of those alums still reside in the region. And that is a good, good thing. Because there are other cities, bigger cities, much bigger than us, that you can go to that it will take you some time to really find your niche, your network. But because we have this program in St. Louis, it really has the time if you reach out to be able to build your network so you can go on and continue to take on those catalytic uh, projects. Our training for the most part in all of our programs it's an immersive experiential uh, program. The community is our learning lab. And for our session for this year, we know that our program participants have been hosted in the program days at a number of our community uh, partners. And it gives you insight into their operations, how they engage and what's, what's important uh, to them. And because of the civic action uh, projects, you'll also get an opportunity to interact with different nonprofits with your fellow uh, class members. We also do a leadership assessment. So uh, we utilize Myers-Briggs for quite some time now, and that allows you to have a better understanding of how you show up within the context of that particular project. And it's not unusual for people to take the Myers-Briggs assessment before they come into the program, but they're also able to learn something new just because of the diversity, uh, just in personality types, where people are from, what their experiences are, because this will help you in your group projects uh, moving forward. Next slide, please. So what makes you an ideal candidate for this group, for this program? I imagine the reason why you're here is because you consider yourself as a leader. We function and operate that we train leaders and we train individuals that have raised their hand to improve uh, their awareness and education and knowledge about a particular issue. So I want to say to all of you who are in attendance today, it's nice to meet our next generation of leaders. We're also seeking individuals that are not only having a desire to have a deeper understanding of different issues that impact any number of our nonprofits in town. But beyond that, they're seeking to be in community with other leaders so they can learn how they can move our region forward, understanding what the shared personal values that people may have. And I read an article recently about how there seems to be a shift in what people are valuing. When you come into our program, we're gonna provide you with an understanding of what's shifting. We know primarily actually based on this article that I read, um, that you know, faith and family, which were number one and two of values that were important to people, was starting to shift. And so it'll be interesting to see where they land. I'm hoping they do another survey by the time this program starts. Another um, thing that you should keep in mind as an ideal candidate, and I mentioned this early on, is how do you see yourself being part of, I call it for lack of a better way of describing it, the movement that addresses civic and social issues. So I was yesterday at the 10th anniversary celebration for the Mosaic Project. And for those of you that aren't familiar, the Mosaic Project has, has looked at how can we be as a region more welcoming to immigrants, recognizing that immigrants 
were really part of our economic development growth in our region. And 10 years ago, they had this vision. And it was a beautiful thing to walk into that room and to talk to folks that said, you know, I wasn't here 10 years ago when this conversation happened. And the initial paper that started um, this movement, and here I am. And it was, I, I actually posted on it uh, uh, last night saying, this is what happens when leaders have a vision for what the future looks like. And we also have accountability partners that are constantly asking them, what have you done with respect to this? And so for you, and this will come up later in our, in our conversation, you know, what vision are you sitting with for our region? And how do you see yourself being part of that vision to move our region forward? The cool thing about each one of our programs, moving on to the next point there, is the diverse perspectives. We know that if we even look at things from an economic development imperative, having diverse perspectives helps you get closer to whatever it is your goal is. So whether it's an economic development or what have you, uh, really helps people come up with innovative ideas. And I've already seen a number of this in play. Is having knowledge about that, the diversity of perspectives, helps make our region a better place to live, work, and play. As I mentioned before, I've been here a little bit over 10 years, and there are some things that weren't here before I came that is now here. And I'm like, wow. So for example, there are some folks who would say never in a million years could we get a major airline like Lufthansa here. Well, guess what? It's happening. And there, there are things like that that I feel like as a region, if we dream big collectively together and we're working on this collectively together, we can make things happen. You should also have an interest in uh, building a, a personal network of leaders. Uh, the fact that we have 10,000 plus alums, there isn't a sector that I cannot pick up the phone and call someone at various uh, companies because we have alums there. And that is a cool thing, is when you're trying to move the needle in significant ways, having that built-in network, because there are individuals that have trust already built in. They can call and they can make things happen. And we, we like folks who aren't afraid to come to the table and join in on our conversations. Um, have this shared experience of how we can make St. Louis better and how we can make St. Louis stronger are key things that as a result of being in community with each other can make uh, that happen. Next slide, please. So here are our program dates, and we actually just updated this on our website. Uh, so opening retreat is Friday, August uh, 25th. You come, meet each other. We have a couple of activities that we um, have that helps you really start to do a deep dive into getting to know each other, understanding what the program is, we give you a preview of here are some of the projects that you can work on while you're in the program. Um, by this time, we also have you take the assessment. So by the time we get to our seminar day one, you understand a little bit about the personalities in the class. And I find it interesting that at this point in time, people are thinking, okay, based on who I've met, I would like to work with Paula, Gwen, Aaliyah, and we say, thank you for that. That's all good. But we're going to pick things up a couple of notches and put you into groups. So you're going to learn more that way um, if we do it than have you pick individuals. It always makes for an interesting and exciting uh, program uh, time. Uh, so those are the program days. Those are the times we have full day sessions. Um, uh, mixed up with half-day sessions, 
employers are always very supportive of our program because of the knowledge, because of the network, the education uh, that people bring into the program. And then you blink and it's now time to say it's graduation day. And we usually set the graduation day um, in early spring. Actually, we were trying to do that uh, earlier on uh, this year so you can mark your calendar. So you not only get to meet folks from your particular program day, you get to meet folks from the spring program day for not just your program, but our leadership uh, St. Louis program, our women in leadership program, our experience uh, St. Louis program, and ways that you can continue to build community and connect uh, with each other. So that time is to be announced later. Next slide, please. So program benefits, and these are program benefits that you can use to talk to your employers to support this program. You'll certainly get a deeper understanding of the St. Louis region. You'll get exposure to influential civic business and community leaders. Um, we bring individuals to help you have the conversation around DEIA um, in ways that expands the thinking in ways that gives you a toolkit for understanding ways in which you can bring that into your workplace, understanding the different conversations that are going on around DEIA. And uh, improve collaboration, community decision-making, facilitation skills that you'll learn just in terms of your uh, group work and also strategic thinking. Who are the strategic partners that you need to bring to the table, not just in terms of your work, but also in terms of your civic engagement opportunities. And the cool thing is now you have a diverse network of peers. Pick up the phone, call anyone in different sectors. If you personally didn't have those individuals in your class, because we give you uh, free membership while you're going in the program, you can easily look into our database. You also get our newsletter. And our newsletter has information not just about focus events. We have information about other events that are happening in community that we feel that you should know or even organizations that you want to connect with. And from time to time, um, it's not unusual for some of our program participants to be sharing new opportunities that, you know what, I've gone through this program, I've grown as an individual, but I've also grown um, in terms of taking on increased responsibilities um, within my company or also outside of your company. And these are things that Focus um, is able to provide for you as a result of going through our programs. And if you're wondering who is the disembodied individual who is helping me advance this, it's someone that you will hear from occasionally as you go through our program, and that is Becky Rasmussen. Uh, Becky is our Director of Communications and Marketing. So if there's any announcements that you have, um, for those of you that aren't in the program yet, that you would like for us to share once you are in the program, Becky is the person that you will reach out to and she will gladly do that for you. So now is the part that I am excited uh, to go into, and that is bringing forth our Emerging Leaders alum. Uh, we've heard from John Plump, who is the Audit Supervisor at Ms. Midwest Bank Center. Uh, John, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Carlos Ramirez, who is one of your uh, VPs, actually saw him last night at the Mosaic Project 10th anniversary. He's an alum of Leadership uh, St. Louis. So yes, we're everywhere, I like to say. And uh, a couple of your other senior level executives are also alums of our program. Uh, also joining us is Renell, I love your name. We have a lot of celebrity type leader names. Um, Renell, okay, I, I have to, although she's not an alum yet, um, how do you say your name? Um, is it she, it's the double S-T-H-I-L-L. -L. 
Okay. How do you say your name? You can unmute. Delisa. Hi. I love that. Mm -hmm. Good to have you uh, join us. So Renell is going to be joining us. He's the Director of Diversity and Inclusion at Marysville University. I don't think I've officially congratulated you on your new position. I saw it all over LinkedIn. I read LinkedIn Thank with you. my people Wikipedia. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to know exciting <laughs> things that our folks are doing um, in town. And Paula, is it Brion Vickers or Brioni? How do you say your middle name? Sorry, it wouldn't let me unmute. Uh, it's Brian. Brian. Okay. Well, you have them here, our Emerging Leaders alum, and they're going to tell us each about what drew them to the program. And after my series of questions, I'm just going to open it up uh, to those that are in attendance uh, to ask questions. So thank you for joining us here today to talk about your program. So I will start with Renell. Renell, so what drew you to the program? Well, so I heard around the St. Louis, because you know St. Louis is such a small community, we're small but mighty, right? I've heard of focused leadership. Originally, um, some of my colleagues in my previous job, I heard about the women's focus cohort situation. And then when I found out about emerging leaders, I said, ooh, that's for me, right? So I applied and I was like, I'm not gonna get accepted. I was super nervous and then it happened. Um, I've always wanted to do something community-based or to be amongst um, other like-minded individuals kind of in the same, um, not age frame, but in the same, I guess, career-wise use of experience that are trying to make a lasting impact and change in the St. Louis area. Um, and that's kind of what influenced me. I can't hear you. I love you. how you shared okay. that in terms of you found out about one program and you then did a, a deep dive and went like, here are my people, here's my tribe, here are my peers, let's dive in. Glad you did, glad you did. John, what drew you to the program? Oh, um, my, my experience was a little different. I uh, Someone actually anonymously submitted uh, my name into the, to the program. So, I actually had to do a little bit of research once uh, I got I got communication about the Emerging Leaders Program, which, you know, after um, really digging into it, I found out some of my coworkers, you know, like Dr. Barsh mentioned, had actually participated in uh, the Emerging Leaders Program. And similar to Rennell was saying, you know, I think most of us in the program were are kind of in that um, either, you know, that middle management part of our career, which is kind of a weird phase and just trying to transition and, and, you know, be a good leader, figure out how to network with other individuals that are in similar phases in their career. And aside from that, I'm born and raised in St. Louis, been here all my life, college, high school. So for me, a big part of uh, where I am at in my career is trying to figure out how to give back to St. Louis, try to pay, you know, my my career experiences for to to other uh, people to create more diverse spaces, um, as as Dr. Barsh mentioned in the in the in the program overview. So mine was a little different. I was someone I still don't know who who submitted me for the for the program. Wow. Um, but I, you know I'm really appreciative appreciative of whoever did because I, I I really got a lot out of it. Great, thank you. I I love how you introduced yourself born, raised, and I like the fact that you inserted the high school thing, because what's a, what's a combo without the high school um, mentioned there? And I've tried to pick a, a, a high school, even though I wasn't born, raised here in the St. Louis area, and I often would tell people, maybe Rosati Payne High School would be the closest to that. Um, Rennell, I'm gonna go back to you. Uh, and ask you, tell us a little bit about you, your background. Are you also born raised or you moved from elsewhere? Yeah, so I'm not born in St. Louis, but I'm from St. Louis, as well as my mother, a lot of close family are from St. Louis. Um, I did go to Hazelwood Central High School. People are wondering mm -hmm. where, because that's the St. Louis thing, as we know. Mm -hmm. um, I did go to school a little far away, two hours away. I went to Southeast Missouri State. 
um, University. Um, actually, during my time in Focus, um, I actually got a new job in the transition of my Focus Emerging Leaders position starting. So that was really cool, totally unplanned, very grateful for that opportunity. Um, when I originally started, I was in that kind of mid-level management position um, at KIPP St. Louis. I was a career and college persistence manager. Um, and then I applied actually on maternity leave to a new job. And that's how I got the role that I am now. Um, I never would have imagined being in DNI. and um, Not that I didn't want to, I just did it in other ways, just not even thinking about it or realizing it. And then um, wanting to learn more about the St. Louis community and what nonprofits are um, kind of focusing in on what different areas. I'm really into career development, workforce development, and education, of course. Um, and that kind of led me to where I am now. That is excellent. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us. So, Paula, what drew you to the program and introduce yourself formally to us? With your yeah. Name? So, I am Paula Brian Vickers. Um, I and in my last days of Girl Scouts, actually, um, I was with Girl Scouts for six years. Um, I was actually nominated by um, someone internally at the organization, and they probably hate that they nominated me um, now. Uh, but I also was a participant in uh, Youth Leadership St. Louis, where I actually represented um, the Girl Scouts like uh, group through the program. Um, I'm from St. Louis. I'm from North City, St. Louis. I was in the DSEG program, so the VIC program, um, and I went to school at Lafayette. Um, but yeah, the and I'll save some of this for the next question, but um, yeah, I was nominated from someone. I think that they, they were preparing me to kind of move up within our council. I was already in leadership, um, so I don't know if I, like I felt like I had already kind of possessed a lot of leadership skills, um, but I also was in a place uh, very privately of wanting to change career paths and focus in on something else. And uh, Focus did that, and they probably really regret nominating me now. <laughs> no, someone saw the light in you. And uh, I was actually at a meeting this morning with a former board member of uh, South Missouri State. Where's that again? It's in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, two yes, hours south. Just keep going down 55. Yeah. Yes, I was. And that's the beauty of the Focus Network. People would say it's two degrees of separation. I said, no, it's minus one. Um, and that's that's the beauty of it. And Paula, I'll actually start with you. What did you gain from the experience besides a new job? And now you're stepping into that leadership role. Yes. Leadership role. I um I had two children during the pandemic. Um, so I had been a Girl Scout my entire life. I'm a 13 year Girl Scout, Gold Award Girl Scout, lifetime member. Um, and I really committed all of my life work to um, empowering girls and women. And that was really my focus. Um, and then I had two boys and my focus kind of started to change. Um, I felt like I was maybe uh, needing to pay a little bit more attention to different spaces within St. Louis um, in order to give my children the best childhood that they deserve. Um, you know, being from St. Louis, we have had different relationships with the community and how Black children, especially Black boys, are treated. Um, so I was very intentional in wanting to be in a space that really looked to protect Black childhood. Um, so while I still love Girl Scouts and I'll stay committed to the organization because it's also something that made me who I am, um, I have now transitioned to We Power. Um, so now I am the early childhood education director and I will be um, leading a $100 million campaign for 2024 um, to get funding for our early childhood education spaces. Um, so the biggest thing I gained, and I didn't expect to gain this, was that um, when people would come in, um, listening to their stories kind of gave me a permission that I didn't think I needed because I felt like I was a very bold person already but it was a permission to like extend outward. So with being at Girl Scouts for six years, um, there's a, a level of like being stagnant and a level of like being around the same that it's kind of hard to like think outwardly um, because I had stability, I had a good role, I had things. So I wasn't like unhappy by any means, um, but also I just felt like 
my values that we talked about, they were starting to shift and wanting to be in new spaces. So I'm listening to other people's stories and hearing how people would like leave an organization and go to an organization. I'm like, wow, like you don't retire from the first place you worked at? Um, because that was very much my plan is just to like retire out of Girl Scouts. Um, but also another thing I gained was we had a lot of conversation around like salary and like discussing that, um, things that people tell you not to discuss. Um, and I was always like, I'm a trained social worker. Social work is my background. And, you know, like social work is like, oh, well, you should expect to not make very much money. Um, but also like having the conversation around like your salary should or could match your lifestyle. Um, so that was something that I had no intention of like gaining. Um, but yeah, there was like a boldness that I took away and listening to other people's stories, um, a boldness to like talk about like what I need to like have the life that I want as far as salary. And then also just the connection, like there's, there's, there's networking and then there's like networking, um, but like networking in a space where people are very intentional about like loving St. Louis and loving like the space. It's different than just going to a networking space for people that might leave the region or they they're here for work or they're here because they they're just here. But like being in a space with people that love St. Louis is a very different vibe. Wow. Thank you for that. I think you have a book in you, Paula. That is awesome. I, I love the fact that you were, you know, you said you didn't really need permission, but being in community with other like-minded people and the whole transparency around salary is very important because you want to make sure that not only do you, are you paid um, what um, your, your worth, but to match lifestyle. So that's cool. We Power is an excellent organization, and I have to say that's a very, very awesome leapfrog. So congratulations on that. John, we'll go to you next. What did you gain from your experience? Uh, so so similar to Paula, I, I gained a lot out of, of being in the in the program. So a couple of things, you know, like I mentioned earlier, being born and raised in St. Louis, you kind of get this um, idea that you you know St. Louis, you've been everywhere, you know how to navigate every area, you you could top to bottom, I know everything about St. Louis, and after getting out the program, I understood that that's not a fact, you know, you mentioned some of the places that were hosting us for our seminar days, places that, you know, I knew existed, but I had never been, and then there were also places that I didn't know existed from Cortex to BioSTL. And then um, our, one of the last days, our last day was at the downtown library. And I think I, I said this to like five people, was, I was amazed. Like I've never been in that library. My, you know, I'm 31 years old. I've never been in that library. So just being able to um, see, I think uh, St. Louis gets a bad rap. A lot of the times in the news, just a negative rap, but there are so many beautiful organizations, so many people doing a lot of great things uh, in St. Louis that are trying to push it forward. So, you know, that was that was one big thing. And like I mentioned earlier, also, you know, being um, in a in a management in a middle management position, you know, when we were working on our cap projects, and we were being put in into the groups, I know a lot of us do have um, kind of leadership positions, or we have reports, but you know, I, I really learned how to kind of add value when you're not, you know, you're not leading the group, you know, how do you contribute when you're not the, the person who, who makes all the decisions or this, that, and the, the third. So that's a big thing that, you know, I got out of the, the program and the, the CAP project uh, in particular is just figure out how to add value when you're, you're not that, that person who, who runs, you know, every, every single thing that's, that's very important. And then, uh, like Paula said, you know, there, there is a difference between networking and then networking, right? So, you know, being around common like-minded people, you know, in, the, in our similar age range, it's similar different experiences. Some of us, you know, from St. Louis, some of us not, but all with that common goal of, of trying to just improve us personally, improve the, the city, improve um, just how, how, you know, our, our aspects, how things are handled um, 
regionally, globally, and whatever the case may be. So just, you know, those couple of things are really important to me. Thank you. I remember coming to your last program day at the library and that place, if you have not been, it is beautiful. And from time to time, they actually do uh, bring in um, certain exhibits. And one of the things I did when my family and I moved here is lose myself in the city every weekend. And I know a lot of places, and this is such a really great foodie city that some folks don't even know. And, you know, besides Krispy Kreme and my favorite donut style places in town, but it is a community that is so rich, it's right here. So we try and expose um, you to that while we are going through the program. Um, for now, I'm, I'm going to um, ask you this question and we can come back to the questions that I've asked uh, others too. What advice do you have for our prospective uh, participants? What advice do I have for prospective participants? I would say, hmm, I have a lot of thoughts. Okay, so <laughs> I would say take a step or leap of faith and try this um, program. Not just to try it, like why not, might as well try it. But like, I know it's super cliche, Gandhi's quote, be the change you wanna see. But I really feel like in this program, I was able to, along with other people, have not only have an impact, but be the change that I wanted to see. And I feel like with joining this program, you have the capacity to not only do that with the civic project and with learning about all the nonprofits around St. Louis, but also after that, like what more can be done or how has the needle been pushing or where is it being pushed or what initiatives are already taking place that you didn't know about kind of like what Jonathan was saying, like not knowing about, I never knew about Cortex, never knew about BioSTL, the diaper food bank. I remember driving past that building as a kid for years. Um, and then knowing that it's a diaper food bank to help people for, um, to help mothers in need for diapers. Um, yeah, just, just, I would say like, once you do this program, I feel like I'm a change maker in St. Louis, right? Now, I don't feel like I'm the person, the expert, the other one, please don't get me wrong. But I do feel more empowered to know that changes are happening, change has been done, and I definitely contribute to that in a positive, impactful way. And I helped move the needle, you know, in the right direction. Um, also, with a DNI lens, I think the diversity of different organizations and the people that you will meet, not only in your cohort, but the other nonprofits around town and the people that we met, it's like, shh, like beyond compare. Um, since St. Louis is such a small city, I feel like I heard this going on and that going on about St. Louis and like this is happening, this is happening, but I'm like, where, like, where is this happening? Like, where am I? I'm missing it. But then with this program, it's like, no, you're the nucleus, you're the glue, you're like, and it's a winner, right? And you're directly, you know, being that change you want to see moving that needle forward. Um, so that's the device I would say, going into it with an open mind, um, definitely try it and like, I'm ready to be a focus emerging leader ambassador. Like, I love focus. I literally love focus. I tell my friends about it and they're like, Rena, come down. I'm like, no, this was the best thing ever. So um, that would be my advice to try it, go with the open mind. And like, you'll be surprised at how much you learn about St. Louis and how much you'll love it more. If you're passionate about St. Louis um, and the changes that are happening or that the changes you want to happen or just about because you're from here or you're raised here or it has special and dear to your heart, focus to me, like made me love St. Louis, like, 10 times more than what I already did. Thank you. That was amazing. Um, I couldn't have written a better script uh, than what you uh, shared with us. So before I moved here, I worked for a similar leadership organization in Cleveland. And I ran a program called Cleveland Executive Fellows. And that program, I probably ran it uh, maybe about 11, 12 years ago. And if you look at the leaders that are running Cleveland today, it's that group. And I'm looking at our alums that we have here today, Renelle, uh, John, I wholeheartedly believe that you're looking at the future leadership 
of our region. There is no doubt in my mind, Paula, that you know maybe in about five, uh, six years, no pressure here, that we are going to put together a panel of the leaders, the change makers that are driving the region. And guess who's gonna be on that list? It's gonna be John, Paula, and Renau. So I'm gonna pause now to see whether any of our uh, prospective participants have questions that we can answer while we are here. And if you do have a question, you can just um, mute. I'm trying to see if I have everyone on, on uh, the screen uh, before we proceed with additional information. And if we have time, I'll come back uh, for, for questions. Okay. Given that I don't see any questions. Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Clarity, D-E-A-I stands for diversity, equity, accessibility, and inclusion. Correct. Oh, did someone ask it? I missed it. Yes, yes. So thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, so thank you, Renell. Thank you, John. Thank you, Paula, for joining us here today and sharing about your experience. Paula, I'm excited for you in terms of where you're going. John, I know you're going to be an ambassador of drawing people in and saying, okay, I am for, from here, but here are all these other places for you to get to know. And Ramel, come on, you are an ambassador. Um, I love it. If any of you are interested in volunteering to serve as ambassador during our What's Right with the Region event on May 11th, Please let uh, Becky and I know. And um, here's some additional information. The tuition for the program is about $895. And if you compare us to other markets, um, we've kept our fees at this amount because we want it to be something reasonable that our program participants uh, can either pay for in pocket or talk to their employers about paying for this. That said, we do offer financial aid um, to those who apply for it, and it's individuals that demonstrate financial need. We also have a scholarship through the generous support of Tony Thompson Foundation, who is a family of individuals that have gone through our Leadership St. Louis program. And we have that for our African-American uh, participants who demonstrated, again, financial lead. And last but not least, in terms of scholarships, we have general support of Big League, um, which uh, also um, Big League Impact scholarships um, are also available for our fall cohorts. Next slide, please. So in terms of important dates for you to know, June 12th is fast approaching, and that's when the application deadline is. You can go ahead and apply online. You can go to our website at focus-stl.org under programs, click on emerging leaders. They'll take you to the application. We'll bring together a committee of alums that'll help us select the program participants. And then um, you'll be notified in and around June 28th. You're welcome, Kathy. Um, understand that a number of you have to drop off for other meetings. And there's a program agreement that we ask you to get back to us by July 7th. You can nominate yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Or you can just go ahead and complete the application. Or if there are other individuals that you know who might be interested in the program, you can also nominate them and we'll take it uh, from there. I want to thank you all for joining us here today. If you have additional questions about this program, or for that matter, anything community related, please feel free to reach out to me. My website or our website you have there on your screen. And my email is also there as well. And while we were on this Zoom, I just got an email from one of our alums of EL who said, 
I have a question. Do you have a minute? Of course. I always have a minute. So I will be following up with this person. But it is great to meet all of you. Thank you again to our panelists for joining us. I look forward to seeing your applications either in this program or any number of our programs or seeing you at any focus event. Have a great rest of the day and uh, look forward to connecting soon. Bye.